Paranormal activity is defined as any activity that happens that does not mesh with scientific theory or processes. The scientific method is what is used to figure out why things happen the way they happen in the physical universe, which is the material universe that we live in. Now, if something happens that the scientific method cannot explain, that is called paranormal activity. Now, there are agencies that investigate paranormal activity. Something like that would be considered controversial because taxpayers likely wouldn't want their tax dollars being given to and used for the investigation and study of paranormal activity. That's generally not the kind of things that taxpayers want to see their money used for. Taxpayers want to see their money used for Social Security, for Medicaid, for other government benefit programs, for infrastructure, for public schools, for for public servants that are accessed via the 911 mechanism. And for public transportation and other public works. If taxpayers were told a trillion dollars of your money is going to the study of paranormal activity, taxpayers would be up in arms. They'd want to know who was behind the legislation. And they would work to have those people removed from office either by impeachment or just not voting for them in the next election. So the investigations of paranormal activity is kept quiet for the most part. And its processes and its methods are secretive. There are people in the United States being investigated for paranormal activity right now as we speak. And those people will find themselves in a gang stalking campaign as a part of the investigation into their potential paranormal activities. There are people walking the earth right now that are suspected of being extraterrestrial beings. There are people walking the earth right now that are suspected of having extraterrestrial life forms living inside of them. There are people walking the earth right now that are suspected of having been abducted by UFOs. There are people walking the earth right now that are suspected of having some sort of a supernatural link to divine celestial beings. These people will find themselves in a gang stalking campaign, whether or not they like it. Now, one thing about gang stalking is this. People who are gang stalked are generally not well known. They're not particularly famous. They're what you would call everyday United States citizens that have just exhibited qualities that some military or federal law enforcement body found to be 
strange, unique, different, not ordinary, and potentially threatening the national security. Now, I'm of the mindset that the vast majority of gang stalkers don't realize that they're involved in gang stalking activity. They're acting on some cue or mechanism that are given to them by superior gang stalkers. I do believe, however, that the people who participate in gang stalking suspect that their actions are annoying and disadvantageous to other people. They just don't care. Being able to participate in gang stalking campaigns makes them feel special. It makes them feel like they're a part of something. And if their activity results in another person who's completely unrelated to them being stalked or otherwise disadvantaged, it's nothing to them. And as of right now, people who participate in gang stalking don't see themselves as gang stalkers, but that's about to change. People are going to wake up to what gang stalking is or whether or not they participate in it. I have seven minutes of recording time left. It's quiet, but a targeted individual's surroundings are never quiet for long. Eventually, you're going to see people in some form or fashion come around you in a synchronized manner. Like I say, a targeted individual is never left alone for long. Eventually, somebody moves to crowded space. And it's synchronized. Maybe that gang stalker on the bike was told, I want you to drive past this person. Maybe that gang stalker was told, I just want you to circle the block right now. Now, if that gang stalker was told just to circle the block and not exactly obstruct the path of somebody, that's still gang stalking. It's gang stalking by proxy. If I know that you have to, that you pull out of your driveway to go to work every morning at eight o'clock on the dot, and I scope you out for a couple of months to see what the variations in time are that you pull out of your driveway every morning. Maybe sometimes you pull out of your driveway at 8.03. Maybe sometimes you pull out of your driveway at 7.57. Maybe sometimes you pull out of your driveway at 8.01. At the end of the day, you are going to pull out of your driveway around 8 a.m. every morning, Monday through Friday for work. Now, if I'm a gang stalker and I'm putting together a file on you so I can have you gang stalked, that's one of the things that I document is what time you leave every morning for work. So let's say once you've been successfully signed into a full-blown gang stalking campaign, 
Now I get to make moves on you. So the first move I'm going to make on you is I'm going to obstruct your path and make you uncomfortable as you leave for work. So what I'd do is I'd have a gang stalker obstruct your path by driving past your vehicle before you leave your driveway so as to obstruct you, to make you slam on your brakes so that you can't get out of the driveway safely and securely. But I won't tell the person, listen, there's a person lives at 1111 Main Street. He leaves every morning at 8. I want you to be in front of his house at 8 a.m. sharp. And I want you to drive past his driveway and make no compromise on your direction. Just drive straight past his driveway, whether he's exiting or not. It's not that easy. And it's not that plain for the gang stalker. A gang stalker can be told by a superior gang stalker, listen, I want you to circle the block of 1111 Main Street around 758. So what will happen is by the time 8 a.m. rolls around, that gang stalker will be in front of your driveway as you're trying to leave. But they were not told to stalk you specifically. They were just told to circle your block at a certain time so that you would feel obstructed as you tried to leave. You see, they're not saying stalk this man individually. They're saying stalk his surroundings so when he tries to move about, he'll run into you. You see, it's gang stalking by proxy. So, that's one of the ways I know to explain it. You're not stalking the person, you're stalking their immediate surroundings, but it's being done on purpose. The person being targeted is being targeted on purpose. There's a police vehicle. Glad we were able to catch one of those tonight right as the trolley was coming. Anyhow, a target is is stalked directly and indirectly by the gang stalkers. Okay? If I tell somebody, if I know that you that you leave school every day at 1.30 for lunch and that you're at the bottom of the stairs of your particular hall at around 1.32 and I tell a group of gang stalkers, okay, I want you guys to go upstairs in hall A at 1.31 exactly. Who are they going to run into? They're going to run into you. I can stalk you by stalking your surroundings. And if it's deliberate, then it's the same as stalking somebody directly. You see. It's multifaceted and a targeted individual is staged. These are military exercises. And they're designed to harass and annoy. Endlessly.